Today, I wanted to become rich. As someone who doesn't have much money, I've always wondered what it would be like to have money. I don't make much money of my content, so you know, subscribe if you're enjoying yourself. So I'll have to find other means. Other means being virtual currency. So I loaded up Disney Dreamlight Valley and got to work. We play as Evan James. He's a man with incredible posture and an even better moustache, whose entrepreneurial spirit is almost as large as he is flamboyant. Looks fucking good. I look incredible. We start our adventure falling asleep in a forest and then falling out of the sky to be greeted by a homeless man who claims he's a wizard. Oh my god, my posture is incredible. The man, known only as Merlin, speaks with such grand vocabulary that a 26-year-old man like myself would struggle with, let alone the 8-year-old that this game was aimed for. Press digitation. Press digit... Like prestige, press digitation. Okay, whatever. Fuck it, fuck that word. He asks how I got here. And I tell him what is the only logical explanation. Basically, Merlin, I was in the park in the city, okay? And I dropped two tabs of acid, and now I'm here talking to you. It's crazy. Merlin begins to tell me the story of this place. However, his early onset dementia is making a show of itself, making it quite the struggle. You must. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't seem to remember what we were talking about. However, all I can see is opportunity. He takes me in the derelict building situated behind us. A crack den? Or the new headquarters for my new money-making venture. After a quick spruce up, I am instructed to retrieve the four royal tools. A pickaxe, a fishing rod, a watering can, and a simple shovel. Sure, these basic outdoor tools could be the key to saving Dreamlight Valley, but they're also the key to making me rich. And so I began my hunt to find the four tools because you know what they say, to make money, you gotta find four outdoor tools that an old man told you to find. On my hunt, I stumbled into Scrooge McDuck, a legend in the business world. This duck is the real deal. With an estimated worth of $65.4 billion, it was gonna be a mammoth of a task to overtake him on the Forbes riches list. So my only option was to kill him. Unfortunately, Disney doesn't allow you to murder your competitors in cold blood so I had to come up with another solution. Lucky for me, however, Dreamlight Valley was scattered in money-making opportunities, the ground itself quite literally sprouting gold coins. The thorns that populated the valley would give me all the money I needed to reach the net worth of dreams, and all I had to do was simply magic away the thorns. Using this method is what allowed me to achieve my first couple of coins, and I couldn't believe Mr. McDuck hadn't even thought of this. Our first part of being rich this is so exciting. It is. It has already begun. Using this method, I had acquired the modest amount of gold, yet I was nowhere near the $65.41 billion target. With each fawn earning me on average seven gold coins, this meant I'd have to remove 9,344,285,714 thorns. Yeah, I'm gonna need another plan. The next genius idea I had came to me during another money making adventure in Stardew Valley a game where I grow crops and sell them for a healthy profit. If I can become a millionaire in Sarju Valley, then surely I can use the same strategy to become a billionaire in Dreamlight Valley. But before I could plant my crops, I'll need to find that pesky shovel. Searching high and low behind every nook and cranny, the royal shovel evaded me. Nowhere to be seen, that is until I found Shea Remy, the former restaurant run by the infamous rat. And there it was, in all of its golden glory, the royal shovel. With the tool in my hands, I got to work, decimating the valley in mounds of dirt in preparation for the crops that will make me rich under the watchful eye of a Mr. Mickey Mouse. Why is he looking at me like that? I don't like that he's looking at me like that. And with the seeds planted, it was time to play the waiting game. Turns out I also needed the royal watering can to grow these crops. However, I had no royal watering can. Every plan I had would come with its hurdles. No matter what I did, some other obstacle would get in my way and stop me from coming. Oh, there it is. So with can in hand, I doused those crops in royal water and played the waiting game for a second time. This was taking too long. No way could I become a billionaire if I had to wait several hours for a carrot to grow so I needed to find another business venture. Any money-making guru on YouTube will tell you to make the most money, you need to diversify your income. Right, so as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of multiple streams. With that in mind, I needed to find another source of income on top of selling the crops that I'm growing. Therefore, I decided to become a chef. 
If a rat can open a five-star French restaurant, then surely a gorgeous moustached man like myself could open a six-star restaurant. But how were I to become a chef if I had nowhere to cook upon? Not a pot or pan, nor knife or fork. Not even a stove. It was until the creepy mouse broke into my home and bestowed upon me the cooker to fuel my chef's start-up career. He instructed me to cook up a fruit salad. Why am I cooking a fruit salad and placing it into a boiling pot? I'm not sure, but I'm also in a world where talking animals exist, so I'm not questioning it. It's all part of the trip. Once the meals had been made, I checked on my crops, and it appeared they were ready for harvesting. I gathered up all of the product and marched myself over to the stall where my dreams were to be made, to meet the man that would make me rich. Goofy. One by one, I sold Goofy the entirety of my stock, the products of my labour. Goofy was about to make me rich, and... Uh, Oh, come on. No matter what I did, nothing would make me rich enough to surpass Scrooge McDuck on the Forbes 15 list. And to add salt to the wound, my direct competitor would constantly ask me for money so I could potentially make more money. Turns out the duck ran a monopoly in the valley. He was the face of a multifaceted conglomerate in Disney. And what is there to do when you're a fresh-faced entrepreneur up against a billionaire conglomerate? You simply just give up. So, did we really fail our entrepreneurial dreams? After all, our challenge was to become the richest man in Dreamlight Valley, and in a world of talking animals, perhaps we did just that. Or maybe we just had the best damn massive trip of our lives. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed yourself, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And thank you to all my Twitch subscribers. I stream over there several times a week, the link is in the description, and I hope I'll see you next time.